This is also known as the events in progress problem. And I solved this using DAX in an earlier video. I'll put a link in the notes below. This is how you do it with Power Query. Let's go. This is my data. Let me zoom in, control shift plus. And we can see we've got check-in dates, check-out dates, uh, a customer ID, a room category, and then the bill and how many people stayed in that room. The issue is I want to be able to do a chart showing me how many people were present each day. So I can easily do a chart showing me how many people arrived each day or how many people left each day, but showing how many were there each day is a problem. And I've solved this before using DAX, and this is the Power Query method. And you may find that one performs better than the other. Right, so I'm starting off, I'm just gonna, I don't care about the time, so I'm just gonna turn these two columns into date columns, uh, which brings its own little quirk. Check this out. If I click on this column, hold shift, I keep my finger on shift, and I change this to a date, and I say replace current, okay, it freaks out. Okay, it doesn't like it. And if I change it back to a date time, replace current, okay, it's fine. So what you have to do, again, I'm holding shift. This is just to do it in one hit. You don't have to hold shift. You can do one column at a time. I'm gonna go date, and you've gotta go add new step. Okay. My data source here is CSVs, um, and this issue seems to arrive with CSVs. So here's two dates. Anyway, on to the main show. What I am going to do is split this row where the person was there for four nights. I'm going to split it into four rows. And then this one where the person was there for five nights, I'm going to split it into five rows. And that gives me a beautiful date column with the days they were there and the five different dates. And I can hook that up to my calendar table. And I can slice and dice and do a lovely chart showing number of people present each day. Doing that though, splitting this into five rows, is gonna give me a problem that it's gonna like, replicate the bill five times. And if I tried adding up that column, obviously they're not paying $518 a night. That's for the whole stay. So I'm actually gonna split this out. I'm gonna reference this bookings data. And there'll be different ways of doing this. So right click reference, and I'm gonna call this my occupancy. And all I really care about is the check-in, the check-out date. Uh, if I was gonna be linking this later on, I might keep the customer ID um, and then the number of occupants. All right, and maybe the room category, but I just don't want the bill. Right click, remove other columns. So this one is gonna be used when I'm doing sums of amounts by day, you know, amount received. Um, this is gonna be for my occupancy calc. So the, the issue is I wanna break that check-in date, check-out date into multiple rows. So I'm gonna add column, custom column. This is gonna be called dates present. And there's a function called list dot dates. Okay, list dot dates. This asks for a start date, okay, the number, and then what duration do you want to step in? So like one day, two days, it's going to be one day for us. Okay, so let's go shift enter just to start a new line. And the check-in date will be our start. That's the day they were there, comma. The count of days, okay, that's the difference between the two dates. I'll come back to that. Okay, so I'm just gonna put maybe two days, comma. And then the duration, okay, this is the sort of annoying thing is you, you put like one in there for a day and then close the bracket and click okay. You get this error and it says we cannot convert the value one to type duration. So going back in here, and if I go to learn about Power Query formulas, you can find the syntax of, you know, if I go here, uh, 
comprehensive function reference. Go to that little link and then search for list.dates. Then here we are, and it gives you a little example of using this hashtag duration. So hash duration, okay. So I'll even just copy that, go back in here, and rather than this, it's gonna be hash duration, I've got an extra bracket. One day, no hours, no minutes, no seconds. So it's gonna increment it in days, okay? And do a list two days at a time. So if I click OK, I've now got this little list. And if I click in here and move this across a bit, okay, you can see that from the first to the second, and then if I go to the next one and click on list, okay, this is running, or let me pick a different one. Let me pick row five, say. So row five starts at the fourth, runs to the fifth. That was two days. So this is the list that I need. So let me go back into that. Uh, formula. The bit I need to fix up is this number two. I need to get the number of days between the check-in date and the check-out date. Um, okay, so the first thing I would do is just go, okay, check-out date minus check-in date. Okay, let's give that a go. You click OK and you get an error. And it gives you a misleading error. It says cannot convert the value duration to number and it, it's it's not helpful. So, you know, that isn't working for me, that check-in date minus check-out date, maybe I need to wrap it. Okay, let's try something else. I know there's a button that can work out the days. So if I click check-out date and then check-in date, and I go to the date button on the add column tab, I can subtract days. And when I do that, it does this formula, duration.days, okay? check-in date minus check-out date. Okay, I'm gonna grab that. Okay, I get rid of that little step. It's just a little helper. Come back in here and paste that bit of code. Okay, duration dot days, check-out date minus check-in date. Put a little comma there and then click okay. And now we've got our list. So this list Again, if I move it over here, is running from the 1st of January to the 4th, which is perfect. That's the days that are there. Let me pick another one. I'll go down to this one here. So this is going from the 6th to the 9th. Let's have a quick look. Yep, checked in on the 6th to the 10th. Perfect. Okay, so what do you do now? Well, now you can come to these little expand buttons, and you can expand that out to new rows. And now for that customer one, they were there for four nights, four rows. This customer was there for five nights, five rows. So the table's got a lot longer and this can you know, slow down your refresh, but it could make your DAX formulas and your visual interactions a lot quicker than using a big complicated DAX function, or DAX expression, okay? And the fact that it does break that out into all those different items um, means that um, you know you didn't want to include amount because the amount would have been repeated over and over again. So you do have to separate these tables. So I'm going to change this to a date, and then I'm going to get rid of the check-in date and the check-out date. Okay, remove columns, and this is all we need. Okay, so let's go home, close and apply, and then once it's refreshed. I'm just going to hook up these tables. So I've got a calendar here. Let me bring in, let me fit, click on the old auto fit. Here's my occupancy data. Here's my bookings data. Okay, let's move these out of the way. And then we just hook up dates present to date on the calendar. And we could do maybe check in date as the dominant one and check out date as the inactive relationship, you know, and write some measures on that. But it's this one I'm interested in. And I really should write a measure for this, but let's just be a little bit cheeky. Well, actually, let's write the measure. So new measure, okay, let's say uh, number of rooms occupied. 
it's sim simply the count rows of the occupancy data. Okay? If I wanted the number of people present, I'd sum that um, occupants column. Okay? So there we go. That's just the, the figure there. And let's just add that. And put it in there by, let's put a month for now. I've only got one, a couple of months worth of data. Put that in the axis. And there we go. Let's put date in there. And then drill down. Okay, and now you can see it. So you're in January. Let's turn some data labels on as well. You can see there were two people there on the first, then three on the second, then four, then five, and then more people checked out. So this is the number of people that were present each day using Power Query to generate that table. Okay, let me know what you think. Is that useful? Do you ever use this? Have you come across issues with it? Let me know, love getting your feedback. Thanks for following the channel. Let other people know about it. I'll catch you later.